Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So that was an interesting little trailer. So this article, all about what was we just seen, is all about GW taking the next step. It's their in debt. So what that means is basically that little sequence you saw at the end, um, they're gonna start putting that before all their media stuff. So just like we see like Marvel Studios, for example, when they have the little Marvel logo popping up before all their films, that's what GW is gonna be doing with their little stuff. It's their next stage of coming to the greater audience, I personally think. Now, there's an article that goes along with this, and it has some a lot of interesting stuff in there. So let's go through all, let's break it all down, and let's just see all the fun stuff inside. Now, the chap who's been interviewed in this article is Andy Smiler, and he is the head honcho when it comes to um, Warhammer Media at Games Workshop. So he has more or less the final say, I think. So um, there is some interesting quotes in this article. We'll start with this one. It's no secret that we're working on some really exciting projects right now. We're animating Angels of Death, developing Eyes and Horn for live action, and we've just put pen to paper on a 40K anthology show. And then he goes on to say, actually, don't quote me on that last one. It's not announced yet. Too late, and I'm sorry. I'm going to start talking the balls out of it. So a 40K anthology show. This, for me, could be great because anthology is a um, is a, a, a different stories. Different stories that showcase, you know, different things. So when it comes to a show of an anthology, this could really knock it out of the park because you could potentially have different aspects of Warhammer 40,000 shown off to teach people, like the broader audience. I, I all think that this is aimed at the broader audience. Yes, it's for us as fans as well, but I think it's mainly out there to bring in new people into the Hobbit. And an anthology show is great because what you could do, episode one, you could have like Sevatan the Night Lords ripping people apart, you know, death, death to the fall emperor all that kind of stuff episode two could be completely different it could be set on like um um, um a, a, a battleship with like you know the imperial navy you know their duties every day what happens when they go to war episode three could be something like about the greater good or chaos gods or something like that episode five could be showing off you know space marines and like the whole baltipod maybe you know their worship towards primarchs or what they do on the, a daily basis and stuff like that it, it breaks the entire barriers down and lets people in to see what 40k is all about so i really do think that if this does work out and the 40k anthology show does go forward because it does say they've only put pen to paper at the moment there's, there's nothing you know guaranteed um well that's well that's the way i'm i'm thinking about it it's, it's just in uh, the planning stages but if this goes forward i actually do think it would be a massive thing for Warhammer 40,000, and of course, bringing new people into the Hobbit. And of course, he also mentioned Angels of Death and Eisenhorn. Angels of Death should be getting their trailer at LVO. They should be, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm super hyped for it. Bowman and Richard, all the people that are part of that team, creating it, really, you're... You, and you're just going to knock out the park, I can tell. You're going to knock out the park, and everyone is just going to flood to it. It's going to be incredible. Now, Eisenhorn, the first live action... Oh boy, now this has some potential. This really does have some potential. Now, um, the, the 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 whole rumor, well, well, it wasn't really a rumor, but the news about it was that the guy behind the, the man in the high castle, I think it was called, it was kind of like this um, Nazi kind of, um, they took over the world kind of, I, I haven't really watched it to be completely fair. I watched a couple of episodes. Yeah, it was cool. Um, you know, some of the action there and stuff like that. Um, but um, to, to have like, a, let's say a big name, connected to Eisenhorn and live action from that really, really does put a smile on my face because Eisenhorn, I personally think, is the greatest story ever told in Warhammer 40,000. I'd go far and say it's the greatest love story ever told, but people disagree with me on that. So Eisenhorn, for me, it has that element of not being too over the top when it comes to action. Um, chaos in there. Um, it has um, that in whole in, in investigation. It, it, it has the love. It has the sadness. It has the death. It's basically kind of like a Game of Thrones because some of the characters that you come to love and stuff die. And, and I think if they portray that properly over on the screen, I think it could be an absolutely massive winner. Again, I, I think that this is this is all made to bring in a broader audience, and I think picking Eisenhorn is probably one of the best things to do, because it, I, I think that story would grip the broader audience, the broader not 40k fans, because us as 40k fans, we're, we're always going to lap it up and drink it up and stuff like that, but it's about bringing that new audience to it and them getting bigger, and hopefully 
if they do get bigger, then they can start producing more stories, more films and stuff like that. And not long, we're going to be sat in a bloody cinema. I'm going to be there with a Space Marine helmet on, with a bloody bolt across my lap, going, for the Emperor and stuff like that. This is this is, this is is the dream. That actually leads on to the next quote, because he actually goes into more detail. And, and this is why I think now they actually really are planning for the future. Because it says, we really wanted a Warhammer ident so that when people are watching one of our shows, they'll know that their seeing is part of the Warhammer brand. It's a mark of quality if you will, something to tie in what you see on your screen to the Warhammer Hobby and Games Workshop. It's more than that though, we really just wanted to take the opportunity to do something special for the fans. I mean, imagine one day you're sat in the cinema, up there on screen, emerging from the gritty fog of war is a space marine, a cinema full of people cheering at Warhammer. That'd be great. So that kind of gives you like a mindset of what really they're coming at this from and what they kind of like to achieve for the end game. I've said this so many times, I would love nothing more than to book a ticket to go and see a 40k film you know obviously i won't probably won't take my kids to see it if he be too grim dark but you know go with a bunch of friends sat there in the cinema cheering for whatever bloody imperium forces on the screen it's probably being butchered or something like that of tyranids or bloody chaos or something but just to have that experience to go and sit and watch something like that and just think to myself wow imagine imagine this like you know 10 years ago all we bloody had was that awful bloody you know uh Space Marine film where the bloody Imperial Fist got wiped out, but blood don't remind me of that. It was horrible. Uh, but now, the look how far we've come. It's 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 incredible. It really is incredible. And, and you know, it's it, it's it's good to see them aiming for something else because at the end of the day, I think with the technology, and I put this this is probably another video for another time. But with the technology moving forward now, I think there's going to be so much you can only do with model sales when it comes to Warhammer, well, so, should I say Games Workshop, because there's a technology getting there where people are 3D printing their own stuff, so maybe they are branching out into other media forms to use their IP in and to make money from that IP. The rest of the article is more or less kind of, you know, aiming towards, like, you know, how they designed, like, the percussion system, why they use drums and stuff like that, you know, the actual CGI that we see at the end, which was used, um, where they, they had the space when you coming out and shoot it into the screen, as you see, and they're going about the bolt gun. Funny facts about the bolt gun and um, the way they have it if that scope is looking as it is then um, i think the iron sight's blocking it so maybe you need to just raise that up a little bit also on the format of cgi because they did mention cgi and like how um um you know scared they were of using it all you need to do games workshop is contact this chap over on youtube called the starters you him and cgi will go together like a cheesecake i swear to god you will make absolutely greatness when it comes to content he is the master some of the best 40k content i have ever witnessed all right chaperunios that is me done for another video thank you for coming thank you for watching as always and um, if they drop anything more about this media stuff eisenhorn angels of death anything of course i'm going to be here making videos content on it talking about it giving my thoughts feedback as i always do but of course i would like to get your thoughts and feedback what do you think of this new ident for Warhammer, well, I keep saying Warhammer 40,000, it's not, it's for Games Workshop, uh, are you liking the, the direction the company's going in, um, do you want to see certain um, um, shows, if if so, what shows would you like to see, for me, I, do you know what, I would love to see a Badab War type of show, Executioners, Space Sharks, um, Astral Claws, um, I, I, I don't know why, but I have such an attraction um, to the Badab Wars, it's probably because the Executioners are one of my favourite chapters, and they're so brutal and stuff like that, so maybe if they can like show something like that off in the 40k anthology and stuff, and that could be, you know, kind of cool, but if not, like Horror Sarah say, Unification Wars, I'm really into my Unification Wars at the moment, something that really gets me hyped, and I just love reading about it as well, as much as information I can find about it, anyway, it, well, Anyway, again, um, I'm just I'm, I'm just rambling. Um, leave all your thoughts, feedback, and everything like that in the comment section down below, and we'll have a nice little chat. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye.